Good afternoon. We're glad you can join us for Facebook Live. Today we're going to be talking about kids and money, so money smart kids. I'm joined with my colleagues, Ka Kamaya wallace Bashard and Kathy Sweetler. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to put their names together and make a, <laughs> a mesh there. I'm Sasha Grobenstetter, and we're your consumer economics team. So I um, wanted to talk to you about kids and money. So Kamaya, let's start. So we have a great thing lined up for you. And of course, we want to hear from you, right? We want to hear your questions or any comments that you have, because I know that a lot of you probably have a lot of interesting things that you've probably done over the years. And so to just like kick us off, um, why talk about kids and money? Why is this an important topic for us to explore? And we've done a lot of work on this topic. We've mm -hmm. written like blog posts. We've done podcasts on this mm -hmm. topic. So just throwing it out there. Why is it important to have like these discussion with kids while they're young and growing? Well, um, I guess I can say from like my own background that money really wasn't discussed in my house. And so the first time I knew how much my dad made was when I had to apply for the FAFSA, like my mm. junior year of college. So I'm like 20 years old by the mm. time I know like how much he actually made for the first time. Um, so I think having open conversations can really help facilitate yeah. um, saving experiences, just kind of being more aware of finances mm -hmm. in general. So mm -hmm. Kathy? Well, I think um, one of the reasons this is an important topic is that if you start when your kids are younger and you're having, you know, kind of little conversations about it, about things that aren't, you know, mind-blowing, then that means that as they get older and they start moving into adulthood and things, they'll feel more comfortable, I think, coming and having money conversations with you. So sometimes you can then... Um, help people over some bumps so they don't have to have those hard experiences yes. with money to really figure out how they want to manage things and do things. So to me, it's like a good practice, like start doing this while yeah. they're young and then, you know, you can build up easily rather than it being like, okay, you're 18, you're living, leaving the house. Mm -hmm. We're having the money <laughs> conversation today. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It's like a really scary yeah. money conversation. You're breaking there. down, breaking down like some of the stigma around money too, to let them feel comfortable with having certain discussion with you. And Absolutely. and kids are gonna bring up the conversation. They will. Because money oh, yeah. is a fun topic for kids. Maybe for adults, maybe not so much, but yeah. for kids. I think with, topic. with kids more it's more about like, mommy, I wanna buy this. And you're like, mm, do we have the funds for that? Can yeah. we actually do that? That's <laughs> right. what I think about. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess for us too, like with what does the research says? Like thinking of looking back, as for us, a lot of what we do, a lot of the topics we cover, we focus a lot on what the existing research says about those topics. And I know for getting kids involved in like money topics, there are a lot of great benefits to that. There are long term benefits and short term benefits to get them involved in like those discussion and the research points to some of that. So within um, getting kids like involved within um, money topics. Lots of things come out of that. So for long-term effects, it could mean that as they get older, they have less delinquency on like loans that they take out. So they learn more about like money management. They learn more about like using credit um, and being consistent as parents or even in school, like well, finding out if there are programs that they can get involved in at the community level and within their schools as well too, to get these topics like reinforced. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. So there's been some, I think, really interesting research that mm -hmm. kind of helps us out. Because mm -hmm. as parents, I know I'm always, always like, what do I talk to them about? What really mm -hmm. matters that mm -hmm. we do? And where do we get started with this? So I think the conversation piece is mm -hmm. huge. Um, but I think, uh, and, and having that happen regularly makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. But we were talking just before that we kind of kicked this off about, mm -hmm. you know, savings accounts and how that mm -hmm. is a really powerful tool um, in so many ways, mm -hmm. um, in the sense of helping, helping a child open up a savings account while they're little mm -hmm. and then start making contributions, even mm -hmm. if they're small. Yeah. Um, and then it's kind of surprising, I think, the impact the research is mm -hmm. showing that that makes for kids. I agree with you, Kathy. So to like piggyback off of it, I've been looking at um, mm -hmm. child savings accounts and kind of the research behind that and like how even just a child knowing that you're saving for them, that they'll actually perform better in school and they'll have better behavioral mm -hmm. um, tendencies as well. So I think that's a good thing to point out. Yeah. We're talking about savings accounts. So whether it's, you know, you're getting it seeded through mm -hmm. like a city or um, a grant or even just doing it yourself, I think that helps mm -hmm. children tremendously. 
Yeah, and the research has been so strong that, for example, San Francisco City is now opening up a savings account for every child that's born there um, that is destined yeah. for post-secondary education. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, that is huge. Think yes, about that. That's like a really mm -hmm. impactful thing. And not only does it have an effect as they're going through school, the research shows that um, kids with a savings account that's been designated, like, this is for you to further your education mm -hmm. or training. It doesn't have to be college. could be job training of some mm -hmm. type, um, you know, for after you get out of high school, for those kids, they're one more likely to start a program, mm -hmm. a yeah. college degree, mm -hmm. and they're they also finish. more likely to finish yeah. it, mm -hmm. which this yeah. is maybe preliminary research, right. but I it's, think, yeah. it's pretty cool. Right. And um, it doesn't take a lot of money. Mm -hmm. These are not youth no, that had... You know, it really, the average, I can't honestly remember what the average is, but it was, you know, below a few hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, they start them as pretty small. For, from mm -hmm. I've read, they are as little as like 25 to $50 being right. seeded. And then, you know, the they get matching from certain, up to a certain, you know, dollar amount or a certain number of years. So it's really nice to see how, um, you know, communities and researchers are working together to kind of push this forward. Yeah, so. yeah. And even when this research was looking at these kids with these accounts, I kept looking at the amount saying, this That's hardly provide, lot. you know, would mm -hmm. cover one semester of books, but yet it had this motivational, mm -hmm. um, self-esteem building effect. So, which we know, finances are empowering, right? That's mm -hmm. what we always talk about, that mm -hmm. having control, feeling like you're in control makes a difference. Yeah, yeah, and it's like knowing that somebody cares about your future, somebody's invested in it, even if it's like a small amount too, can help with push that and feeling confident that, oh yeah, yeah I know that um, I have just a little bit in savings, but I want to finish this program because somebody is invested in me. I agree with that. Wonderful. So, Kathy, should we talk about our beautiful display? Well, sure. Mm -hmm. And also for our audience out there, we'd love to take questions yes. from you. And it doesn't have to be about kids and money. It can be on any financial topic that you're thinking about right now that you want some information about. And you can just write your questions in the comments section under the post about Facebook Live. Um, and we're doing our best to monitor that. And so we're gonna just keep chatting about mm -hmm. kids and money, but until we get some questions, but we're that's what we're here for is to answer. So I don't know if we, we don't have any questions. We got yet. none yet, so no, here's no, your chance. Mm -hmm. Get your question in first. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's the challenge. <laughs> the challenge line. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the books. I'm really excited about this. I think um, for me, you know, I'm in a different stage of uh, kids, right? right? Like my son is a toddler, he's only two and a half. So like learning about the things I can do with them is really exciting for me. Um, I know Kamaya's got a little bit older child yeah. and Kathy is more seasoned and has children who are out of the house. <laughs> so we can talk about all like kind of the different stages, which is kind of fun, but I've really enjoyed listening to them kind of be more the experts mm -hmm. and talk about the things, mm -hmm. um, especially on our podcast, Family Financial Feuds, which you can yeah. now find on iTunes. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, so sorry. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about books. So um, yeah, let's talk about them. Who wants to start? Yeah, I mean, I'll start with a simple piece, and that is um, whenever I, there was a topic that I wanted to bring up with my kids mm -hmm. and have be part of our conversation, I looked for books because I love books. Mm -hmm. And I loved reading stories to my sons, and it gave us kind of some quiet moment to talk about things. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I had three very active sons, so we needed some quiet moments. So, <laughs> um, so we wanted to bring up the fact that Books are a great way to start conversations about mm -hmm. money and to have it just kind of be a natural thing. Um, so if you're already reading to your children, which mm -hmm. a lot of people do, yes. then you might want to look for some books at your library that are on the topic of money. And so that's what we we're what first thing we wanted to illustrate. Yeah. But then there's more, and I'm going to let um, Kamaya tell you about Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So with the books that we have displayed right now, so the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, has a curriculum called Money As You Grow. And so we've been incorporating this into um, a lot of the work that we do with like young, young children. And these are just stories about money, so different stories, and they come with a guide for parents. So we present this to like parents so you can, it gives you like instructions on how you should have like a conversation with them. So in these stories, you might learn about things like sharing or saving or borrowing. And it just kind of guides you through how you would start that conversation. For example, it's like, choose a re really comfortable place that you need oh, to, yes, yes. Really good. Yep. and read through the story and, and get familiar with the story before 
you introduce it to like the kids so that you get a little bit of familiar with it and then once you're going through that story it highlights like some really good topics that you can start a discussion with so you would know like your children too right like what are some things that they would like get excited about and using like the guide to start those conversations and continue those i really love these i think Mm -hmm. these are so powerful um Mm -hmm. and i like them because I mean, you can read the book ahead of time, but it also gives you like a really short synopsis of like the book. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it talks about some key ideas. Mm -hmm. It tells you some things to think about, some things to do before you read, which is what Kamaya was talking about, like find a cozy, quiet place to read. Um, Some things to talk about and then some things to do, which I think is really fun. Mm -hmm. So like this one example. I was going to mention, I like the activities at the end. I like the activities. That's the teacher in me, right? Um, But this one says a chair for my mother and then it says make your own money jar, which I mean, any kid could do at any age. I could feel like that's great. You know, but some of the other ones are a little bit more advanced, like family talent brainstorm, like use the Mm -hmm. skills and talents of each member of the family. So this one was, you know, this one goes with uh, a chair for my mother by Vera Williams. So we'll put that back right over there. And how, and how can people get those? Um, you can get the parent guide. These are available for free yes. through the CFPB. So on the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau website, they do have like the money as you grow um, curriculum and all the information on there with like the parent guide. So if you just want to explore it to see um, what it is, um, you can download those for free. Or you can even request them too to be mailed to you. So there are some options for those on there. So you can go on there, explore to see if these this is something you might be interested in. Yeah. And I know that I'm doing them in my local libraries mm-hmm. where um, I where I am going, like where I live. And so I'm excited to do that mm-hmm. and you know use the parent guides and use the books and help the kids mm-hmm. kind of understand finances a little bit more. So that's exciting for me. So yeah. I'm enjoying that. And I guess one thing I would add to about like these books. So for this particular curriculum, it's ages like four to seven Mm -hmm. um, that could benefit from a lot of these stories like really well like um, so we have even like for example like Curious George right Uh, you probably won't want to read Curious George to your teenager Uh, but this like helps they do have ones for older kids too I did look into that yes yes so they have some for the older kids but some of the ones that we're displaying right now are for like that age group so making sure that you look a little bit closely to see like what type of book it is and um, if it will be kind of appropriate for like your kids yeah Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. But they're they're fun books. They're you know, especially if you're a money geek. But even if you're not, (laughs) they're just really good stories that people have looked at. And they're common books. Like I want to say that they're also like common books, like that we have read. You know, as children, Mm -hmm. as you know, like um, the A Bargain for Francis was like one of my sister's favorite books growing up. Um, A Chair for My Mother. We have Alexander, who used to be rich last Sunday. Mm -hmm. My husband read that to my son the other day, and we just giggled about how cute it was. Mm -hmm. Um, The Berenstein Bears comes up. There's just a lot of Curious George. I mean, it's just books that we're already reading that already Mm -hmm. have, like, that money tie into it. So it's not, like, outside the realm of what we're normally reading to our kids Mm -hmm. anyway. So just wanted to state that as well. So when we're talking about ways to start conversations, we've covered, like, when they ask for something. That's a good way to start talking Mm -hmm. about values. Um, books as a yeah. good starter. Um, what other ways have we? I mean, you, have you guys had experiences where kids you've had conversations yeah. about with, money? Yeah, I know yours are a little bit younger. Yeah, and I know for me, it's like a conversation around like a piggy bank. Um, and I think I've mentioned this before too. Like for my six-year-old, um, when she first got a piggy bank, like the interest in it, she just wanted to put stickers all over it, and every coin she found around <laughs> the house goes into the piggy bank because it was so fun. That's and now, place. like, when we talk about certain things, she's like, Mom, do I have enough in my piggy bank to get it? I'm like, well, let's talk about this a little bit more. So we would have conversations around the piggy bank. And also, to like, using, like, hands-on activities, going back to some of what is in, like, the parent guide, too. Um, some of the programs I do with, like, younger kids involve um, coin rubbing. Like, they yeah. love that. I used to do that when I was little. And they still, like, kids today, they still love the coin loving or who is on your coin or what's on your coin coin collecting yeah you know? so just looking at some of excuse me some of those have been um quite fun in my household and by mm-hmm. coin rubbing i think what kamaya is talking mm-hmm. about is you take a coin you put it down okay. flat like on the table mm-hmm. then you take a, a small piece of foil lay it on top mm-hmm. and then rub it with like the eraser on a pencil oh that's what you're talking about yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm literally like <laughs> sitting here like rubbing my coin <laughs> yeah. and then, then the kids see the image of whatever that coin is oh, that's yeah. up and okay, that makes I've done sense. it with kids so many times, and their eyes just pop. Yeah. Like, they don't anticipate it. They don't realize <laughs> what's going to happen. And I, I use it um, when I'm out 
um, in kid events and I have international coins. Mm-hmm. So that's just also a great way to like yeah. talk about the fact that different in currency. different countries people have different currency. Yeah. And again, how would you know that if nobody, if you haven't had a chance to travel? So <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really like I said, I thought, I thought it was like this. All right, yeah. Well, thank you, Kathy, for coming. <laughs> oh yeah. I see this look on Sasha's eyes. I was like, I think we need to clarify. She's so yeah. intuitive. She's like, Sasha, I need to clarify. This. Yeah. <laughs> Silly Sasha. No, you're not. No, absolutely not. Well, I just don't know because I yeah. do have a little guy. So for me, like right. these are new things that I'm exploring as well. Absolutely. So I'm like, whoa, this is cool. Like, this is really neat. So I'm enjoying it. Yeah. So, all right, going back to the question of why involve like kids in savings? So, when you involve children uh, at a young age in savings, you know, as they get older, they start to express more po- positive attitudes towards money and more interest in wanting to save mm-hmm. more. And I've done like programs, like set programs with um, different youth from um, community centers, and I would go in for like a certain amount of time. So, I did one that I just completed for four weeks. And so at the beginning, when we would have like the money conversation, it would all be about, we're going to buy this because we love it. And then closer towards the end, it's like, well, I do want to buy something, but I also want to save a little bit. Oh, so it kind of changes hmm. a little bit over time too. Um, that's interesting, isn't like it? Being, yeah, like being consistent with like the different topics. So they come in and they're like, oh, Miss Kamai is here to talk about money. So like having like those, um, having a little bit of consistency with um, continuing like the conversation kind of helps to, yeah, I still want to buy stuff, but I also know that I can save as well. Yeah. yeah. One of the I things I did, that. I will say, um, you know, even though I, I have a small child, like one of the cool things I did when I was at, uh, in undergrad was we worked with um, an extension educator there, her name is Lucy, and we did this cool save, share, spend activity. Mm-hmm. So, but we also like partnered it with um, using a bank. And so like we gave all the kids candy and we said that they could deposit it to get two pieces or they could eat it right away. So we did that first, you know, like depositors, you know, keep it. And then we did the save, spend, share, which was kind of nice. And, you know, you can see the kids like we gave them options for sharing. So like Mm -hmm. for sharing was like, you know, donating to um, an animal shelter or like Mm -hmm. my friend needs lunch money or my mom is having her birthday and we need to get her a gift so things like that it was kind of fun to, to talk about so i'm just gonna do a check um do we have any questions yeah. coming in anywhere i don't see any just questions. reminder that we're yes. here to take questions yeah. and just kind of you know talk about whatever you'd like to talk about but today we're talking about money and kids until yeah. we get a question so um that's what we're doing and we're I've been covering all kinds of different things on that topic so Absolutely. I think um, to piggyback on kind of what Kathy was saying, like there are different ways to talk about kids with money. Like I think um, we we focus a lot on younger kids, but I think as older kids, I think yeah. talking about, um, you know, funding for college and mm-hmm. um, potential student loans, like that end of it is mm-hmm. important as well. Absolutely. Uh, I know that when I went into college, um, you know, like that conversation wasn't had mm-hmm. and I didn't really know how much my college was worth until, you know, Three, four, three fourths of the way in, right? <laughs> um, when I had five to file for the FAFSA, but I think having those discussions with ki- ch- with your kids really helps. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I really appreciated college until it was in grad school paying for it myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that piece of it as well. Kathy feels like, I feel like she's <laughs> I know, she's like, like, I'm like, ready. Like, yeah, I'm like, she's ready. Go, so. <laughs> well, I was doing some research and I found this um, survey research that was done where they asked millennials mm-hmm. what they wish they had been taught about finances mm-hmm. um, by their from their parents. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, and LeBaron and Associates in 2018 did this. and um, So... I just thought it was so interesting because... Is it because I'm a millennial? Well, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me. I was like, I feel like, are you... I am. Yes, okay, yeah. good. Okay. Okay, okay so, good. We're on the same boat here. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not. And, um, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, what they said was that they, um, they wish that, one, they had had sit-down conversations. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, that kind of supports what we've been saying. Mm-hmm. Um, but they also said they wished that they had had chances to make mistakes with money and to yes. learn by it. Practice. So that really comes back to that mm-hmm. practicing mm-hmm. piece. Um, so we'll come back to that, yeah. I think, and talk about that a little bit more in depth in a minute. Um, cause then I felt like then if they had made a mistake, they could have gone to their parent and mm-hmm. like had that back and forth, like mm-hmm. what worked, what didn't work. So that was a positive thing. And then they wished they had had a chance to get a job. Yeah. And yeah. actually earn their own money. And I just thought that was... Well, really interesting because I'm curious to see what they think in 20 years. But 
Um, but also, you know, there's been a real shift in our society where more and more young people, when they're like in high school, are not working mm -hmm. part time <laughs> um, because there's been a lot of pressures to do other things, um, mm -hmm. to prepare for college in other ways or prepare for a job mm -hmm. in other ways. So we've really seen in our society a, a significant shift in how many people are getting work experience before they're 22 yeah. or whatever. <laughs> so, um, so I thought that was interesting too. Right. So it's just interesting to hear um, millennials kind of, you know, think back mm -hmm. on what they would like to see different and then to see that it kind of does support some of what we've been saying right. in the research out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more opportunities to practice. So I now have a teenager that's in my household. Oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I now have a teenager in my household and she needed a new iPad for school. And um, we were talking about savings because she does have like her savings account and we were weighing the pros and cons. So Ooh. we were um, Look at trying you to practice. Every I know, I we were it. practicing. So um, it's like, I need this for school right now. This is what I have in savings. What makes sense for us to do right now? So we went through like this, a great conversation and she just kind of listed out like the pros and cons and deciding whether or not like right now is the time to make that decision because of course for a 13 year old buying an ipad is a big decision right yeah, it's a big right, decision right. but it's something that she needed for school so we did that we got some chance to like practice and look at the amount that we had and to try to decide like what are we going to do now <laughs> um and it it turned out good but you know for her it's more thinking well I really wish I had that money in savings still, but she knows that she needs it. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of leads into um, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau did mm -hmm. a study and talked to a lot of experts and things and came mm -hmm. up with sort of like, what do we need to incorporate in youth curriculum mm -hmm. um, for educators? And one of the big things was teaching the skill of comparing and contrasting. So mm -hmm. in a way, it's not all about finances. It was just this idea that you would look at alternatives and think about the pros and cons, mm -hmm. just like what you said, mm -hmm. and and learn how to compare and contrast. And I think that's one of those things that we can build on with our youth from the time they're, you know, in <laughs> elementary, secondary, you know, middle school, mm -hmm. but really around the middle school age, I'd say, is where it starts to really make sense mm -hmm. for them, mm -hmm. is to... Um, you know, okay, you there's different things you want to do with your money, or mm -hmm. you think you want to buy X whatever. Mm -hmm. What are the different brand choices? What are the different levels of that? Because yeah. a lot of times there's like yeah. add-ons and extras. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and have them do their own compare and contrast. Yes. Um, that they would really kind of think through that and then you could have a discussion about it. Right. Because I do see that a lot of times um, when we're working with other, with adults, um, when I ask them, for example, and, the re and surveys show this, like when you went and got that home mortgage, did you compare Mm -hmm. mortgage costs mm -hmm. at different financial institutions. <laughs> no! And I'm like, why? Okay, so... <laughs> because they're not always the same, right? right. And you might exactly. be able to find a lower cost for mm -hmm. the same product. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's, I think, why, you know, some of the things we're talking about with money is like, you know, putting money in savings mm -hmm. really involves always dollars. But com comparing and contrasting could involve all kinds of things that don't involve dollars as well. Yeah, absolutely. And even going back to the curriculum, the money as you go curriculum, there's a lot of things in there around problem solving, decision making. So using like these different techniques that doesn't necessarily look at the dollar amount itself, but how do you think about sharing? How do you think about um, doing like the pros and cons list or um, problem solving? Needs, and, needs versus wants needs is versus ones. wants comes Absolutely. up in my, mm -hmm. some of the things that I've been reading with Marcus. Mm -hmm. Or like um, one of them is like more innovative and like let's use what we have to create a better product. Or like mm -hmm. um, it was about, this, about the Pablo one that they make um, salsa. <coughs> so then they can sell like, oh, here's all the things you need to make the salsa. And then mm -hmm. they get all those things sold. So. Sorry, I just had to interject. No, that's no, good. That's these are great. Um, I want to Absolutely. piggyback off something Kathy said. I think that um, it's easier when children are younger to make mistakes financially than mm -hmm. when you're older. And mm -hmm. I say this because, mm -hmm. um, you know, money wasn't really spoken about in my household. Mm -hmm. And I learned the hard way with credit card debt. And, you know, um, some of the things I talk about in our money personalities mm -hmm. 
podcast, mm-hmm. which you can now find on iTunes, <laughs> Family Financial Feuds. So sorry. Okay. Um, so <laughs> and the like, title is not Family Financial Feuds. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the title is so Family sorry. Financial Feuds. Right? Yeah, we should talk about money personalities. <laughs> um, but uh, we we talk about it there. Um, we talk about um, you know just the different personalities. But mm-hmm. I think if I had known. How to make mistakes financially earlier, I would have done mm-hmm. a lot better as a young adult in college. Mm-hmm. So I just wanted to say that mm-hmm. as a millennial, looking back, <laughs> Kathy. And, you know, in, and in another sense, too, like when I was growing up, my dad is such a huge saver. And so I like the feeling of being empowered. So having like my savings, so when I get like allowance or the things like that, I was able to build on that and feeling empowered. And I see that some of what I've learned to try to you know, use that with like my kids and it's been interesting because they're a different generation and how they think about like all of that too, mm-hmm. which brings me to a point that I would really like to highlight with like the money topic. Sometimes it can get very serious. And so for me, even like how I talk to my kids and um, how I teach about um, money and handling money, a huge thing is money is fun. For a seven-year-old, money is very fun. It's something you can spend it. You can buy things that you really think you need. You know, you can spend well, it's it. Kind of like celebrating. I it. know you were celebrating it. So it's build, um, building up the positive attitude around it. So yes, money is fun to use, but it's also fun to save as well too. So mm-hmm. making it fun to put away money. Yeah, to mm-hmm. kind of start building that idea that yeah. using money to get where you want to be. Yes. So, you know, working towards your goals. And so, like, that's one of the things, too, I think we always have to balance with our kids. Um, you know, when do we let them spend money? When do we let them make a um, mistake? Mm-hmm. And I can remember one situation mm-hmm. where my son wanted this random thing. Um, and I'm trying to protect the innocent here. So, it was a, <laughs> it was a, let's just say it was a large stuffed toy. And it was going to take, like, all his savings, all his birthday money, all his Christmas money. So it was like a huge purchase where normally he would make small purchases. This was like everything, right? And I was like, I, you know, this just seems like you're going to be really sad that you put all your money into mm-hmm. this. And he was like, no, I really want this. And I was like, well, let's, let's walk around the mall mm-hmm. and give yourself some time to think about it. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so we did, and he was just adamant that he really needed this yeah. item, and he wanted to do it. And I thought, like you, you know, better to make those mistakes when mm-hmm. you're young. Mm-hmm. And he was in, you know, maybe late elementary, middle school. And I was like, okay, okay. No, in my mind, I was sure it was a mistake. I mean, I just knew we were going to have to deal with sadness, but it would be a learning experience, right? Yeah. Well, lo and behold, that was not a mistake. Oh. That is something he still has. Wow. That is something that he really treasures um you know so sometimes when we think they're making mistakes mm-hmm. they're actually doing what they want yeah, and it makes sense them. to them yeah so Absolutely. i feel like it was like hey mom look at me all these years later I <laughs> well, <laughs> then, i've wondered about that but i don't know that that's <laughs> true Ooh, um, we, have we do have a question from samantha hi sam hi. um do you have any tips for helping kids of different ages think about giving oh come back mm-hmm. i would love to hear uh, love to help encourage my five-year-old to think about helping others, whether mm-hmm. that's giving money to causes she cares about or donating some of her favorite, I think it was toys, her favorite toys after she outgrows them. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So I can quick start. Um, I know like in my family, we started at um, donating toys. So going through to pick out um, toys, even if you do love these toys, is this appropriate now for you? Um, so going through toys, and then we also moved into... A friend's birthday party is coming up and we are going shopping for a gift for um, your friend and it's hard for a four-year-old you take them to the store you take them to the toy section or wherever yes. you go and to make that decision so so for her the conversation we had was well it's your friend's birthday and we're trying to get a gift for your friend and so using like creating like a kind of discussion around it where um, she doesn't feel like she's been left out of not getting a gift, but you're doing something nice for someone else. And it was hard, of course, because, you know, wrapping her brain around that. But um, we did a few practice run <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> we're like starting in the car. Oh, we're going into the store to look um, for a gift for your friend. We're not going to get a toy for you right now. Your birthday will come up and you will get yours when your birthday comes. But yeah, 
took a few tries <clears throat> of that. I think also, um, just like for a lot of things with money, sometimes we just, I need, our kids need to see us do it yes, mm-hmm. that's what I was going and to have that visual. So, you know, when there's opportunities, when you're giving, um, let them, you know, either talk about it or let them see it. You know, like for example, mm-hmm. over the holidays, there's always, you know, opportunities to drop money in buckets. Mm-hmm. Um, you may have other places like your, um, religious institution mm-hmm. where there's a place to give or maybe when you're donating things of your own mm-hmm. um to a you know to a good cause you can you can um share that and have them be involved in it so it doesn't i don't think it always has to be them giving right. i think they also you know where it's <laughs> their toy although i think that has mm-hmm. some advantages too but it can also be seeing somebody role model that mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes we can't always have it be yeah. specific for Absolutely. some of them. And that's what I was going to say. Just like, just make sure that you're modeling the behavior mm-hmm. that you want to have instill in them too. Because, you know, like I think about, and it doesn't even have to be monetary. Like, you know, you could be like taking your kids to the food bank and doing that kind of volunteering and giving back or taking them to the shelter so they could read to the, the cats and the dogs or whatever right, it is. Right. You know, like it's just, you know, give, fostering that experience mm-hmm. I think helps to kind of facilitate yeah. Adults doing it later in life, you know, right. teenagers, you know, I think that giving spirit really um, grows. An- another strategy I used when um, my sons were young was I wanted them to have not only during the holidays to receive gifts, but I wanted them to be in the habit of giving gifts. I felt like there should be an exchange. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I also wanted them to stay close to their cousins who are um, across the nation. So when the holidays would come around, I would ask them each to make a list of who they wanted to give a gift to. And, you know, it'd be like their grandparents and who, you know, whoever. Mm-hmm. And we would talk about that list to make sure it wasn't like so many friends or something. <laughs> right? And then um, I would give them a budget. I would give them yeah. money mm-hmm. to oh, to make idea. that purchase <laughs> because it was we didn't they didn't have that much money. I mean, we didn't give that large of allowances mm-hmm. and things. They didn't have that much money, so they would have a amount that they could spend, and then we would go to a place that had the right cost of items mm-hmm. <laughs> because you can't take them to like the most expensive place and then right. do that. And then they would be able to pick out items, and they had this total amount. So we would talk about it ahead of time, like. Well, if, and I'm just going to keep the numbers simple here, if you have, um, I'm really 10 is kind of a large number for young kids to buy things for, I think, but if you had 10 and you had given them $20, we'd say, you know, that's only $2 each. So mm-hmm. if you spend more than that on one person, you're going to have to spend less on somebody else. Mm-hmm. And um, we had a great organization in this community who uh, would put together a store of low cost items mm-hmm. for the little oh, kids and you. you could go shop there. But mm-hmm. you could do that, I think, at other places too. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. was just part of our holiday ritual that they that's continued um, as we got a little older and we couldn't really quite do it at those little dollar things, you know, mm-hmm. then we would like, you know, go to, go to another bigger store or whatever. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing I wanted to say was I, I learned this tip from, um, a teacher when we were talking about, uh, the, the high school financial planning program mm-hmm. with Mifi. Um, and she said that, um, as her children got older and this may not be applicable so much anymore, but she would help, she would make them write the checks out for their utility bills and stuff. Okay. And I thought that was a really cool thing to do. So whether, you know, now you may have them like input the numbers on the yeah. computer <laughs> or if you still write checks um, and then have that, you know, that stamp sent out. But then she also made them balance the checking, that checkbook too, which I thought was really yeah. cool. Um, and I was like, man, I wish I had done something like that. Um, one of those experiences. So just another like, here's some other things to try. Yeah, I think whatever you're doing with finances, then, you know, involving your um, children is in whatever way is age appropriate, Mm -hmm. which is great. One thing I will say um, that I love that my sister-in-law did was she was always very honest with us about how much money she made. And maybe that's not something that's comfortable for everyone to do. But I do think that being realistic about like how much we all, how much we do make and how much we can spend Mm -hmm. is a really good thing. Um, and in one of the books that it's called Those Shoes, like they talk a lot about like the needs and the wants and you know, like, yes, I really want these shoes, but I, you know, I really need to have boots. And mm-hmm. so I thought that, you know, just bringing that back in, like just having those conversations of like, no, we can't purchase this today because right. we have other things that we have, to, we need to buy versus yeah. wanting to buy. Mm-hmm. I think that's great because a lot of times when we just say to kids, you know, um, 
no, you can't have that. Right. We, we don't have the money for there's that. There's no reason for it. No, or there's no explanation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they don't really understand. They're like, but you have money. I can see it in your yeah. wallet. Or yeah. you're buying things mm-hmm. at the store, so you have money. Mm-hmm. But when you tie it back to like your personal family values or mm-hmm. what your you know your goals are, then I think it starts to help. It makes a little mm-hmm. more sense to them, and they're not. It's not quite so. Yeah frustrating and demanding and yeah, I think also so clarifying upset. before you get in the store what you're shopping for is always yes. a really good idea yes yeah right. that's worked really well for me <laughs> well I was why are we here I remember, you know why we're here I remember us having this conversation a while back ago mm-hmm. actually and maybe it was me also listening to your podcast um but um it. sorry <laughs> just like it's so funny. Okay, when we're talking about your podcast and like just talking about kids and money, so one of the things I did for Valentine's Day was I bought Marcus loves um, Hot Wheels. Mm-hmm. I don't know what we're talking about brand. He loves little cars, little cars. And we, so I went into the store and I bought twenty Hot Wheels, and I was like so excited. And I wrote love Marcus on the back for Valentine's mm-hmm. Day because I can't bring you know um, mm-hmm. g- food goodies anymore, which is fine. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know, these are not for you, buddy. These are you know we're buying these for your friends so you can give mm-hmm. on Valentine's Day and just prefacing before we even left the house Mm -hmm. when we got in the car when we got in the store Mm -hmm. like these aren't for you these are for Mm -hmm. other people so i really appreciated that yeah i just want to let you know that yeah fantastic you can write that as a success story um do we have any (laughs) other questions questions. yeah we don't have any more questions coming in um did you want to talk about this guy oh yeah we this kind of goes all the way back to where we were talking about money conversations Mm -hmm. and starters and We have really good um, resource from University of Minnesota. They have put together a handout called Money Conversations for Parents and Children. Mm -hmm. And they're just like little ideas of things that you Mm -hmm. can throw out at the dinner table or in the car when you're driving around or Mm -hmm. wherever. Um, You know, so they could be things like name three things you like to do that don't cost money. Okay, so that would be one thought. Or if you found $100, what would you do with it? I think that's yeah. really, I really enjoy these little questions. Yeah, so yeah. we wanted to throw that out as a resource. Um, and also, um, we do blog mm-hmm. on the Plan Well, Retire Well blog, and we um, have frequently written about working with the idea of finances and youth and different mm-hmm. levels. So yeah. you might find some of that information in there helpful too. I think actually one of our most popular blog posts is about um, your financial file cabinet one. Oh, that's right yeah it is it's one of the most popular and most viewed yes. <laughs> which is kind of interesting <laughs> <laughs> um, but that idea is when um, I was sent when I was asking my sons to start keeping track of their own things um, in terms of papers then I got them each one of those little file boxes you know that's just like really not very big um, it has a lid that locks is down and they start keeping like their, you know, checking account information mm-hmm. and their, um, when they're applying for colleges and their financial aid information all in there. And, um, that had turned out to be the best organizational tool I can imagine <laughs> because it could go to, with them to mm-hmm. go away when they were living away. Mm-hmm. Um, it just sits on a, a bookcase or a shelf. It doesn't take much space. Um, things really stay in there. Mm-hmm. So like if I would, they would call me and say, I'm applying for a job and I'd be like you need your social security card and they'd be like where do you think that is I'm like it should be in your box do you know where your box is <laughs> <laughs> and they would and then they could find it so that was good mm-hmm. on here. Um, um, Aaron asks us um, how can I get my young adult uh, oh no sorry. what is a good age oh yeah what is a good age to start, start an allowance for kids good. is there a reasonable amount oh my gosh a good perfect reason? example okay. I, don't think, I think it's perfect it might not work for everyone so um, my husband and I, this is something that we've talked about over the years. And so he has this strategy that was used with him when he was younger. And it's based on age. So at oh. home right now, we have a 6-year-old and a 13-year-old. And so the 6-year-old get a $6 allowance um, every couple of weeks. And the 13-year-old gets a $13 allowance. So with that now, that kind of depends on kind of where you're at. But that's one strategy that we've explored because we were thinking about how do you do that? Do you give them money each week? Do you do it every week or every no, two weeks? No, no. Like so what it's is... like every two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Initially, we started like a for a day. month. Yeah. So okay. we, st- we thought about it for a month. You could do it for a month. So like each month, like 
maybe like six dollars for the six year old each month so it could start really low so that's one way that we we don't know how it's gonna go yet we just started it i've heard a lot of people do <laughs> yeah i just started it so a... we'll see how how it goes and i think there is no like perfect amount no. you have to depends on your own family budget and what you're asking them to pay with it yeah. right so if it's just for fun stuff that's a little different than if you're saying you know you need to buy i don't know you know your mm -hmm. snacks at school yeah. or whatever um but the other thing I think some, you know, there's always this debate that I hear with parents about, should we give an allowance or do they have to earn it? Right. And, yeah. and I, you know, so you have to find like where you are mm -hmm. on that. For me, I really want my um, sons to have money to practice with. Mm -hmm. So they got a certain amount each week. And it wasn't tied to their chores because they had to do their chores whether we gave them money or not. Like it wasn't, I just didn't want to be monitoring that part. Like they had to do the chores and they got the money. But if they wanted something extra, like if they were, there was an item they wanted they couldn't afford with their allowance, then we had items that they could do that would earn extra. Mm -hmm. So like above and beyond their yeah. household, they're above and beyond taking care of themselves, which yeah. is kind of their chores mm -hmm. or the, you know, like the cleaning up the kitchen type stuff. Um, but there was, you know, things that would really literally help us around the household, whether it was washing the car, cleaning up the car, you know, cleaning yard out a, a shelf, yard work, mm -hmm. depending on the age. When they were really little, it was things like shining the kitchen with Windex, you know, or, or picking up, <laughs> you know, one. picking up all the shoes around the house and putting them in the yeah. right rooms, so, you know. Um, so, you know, and then they would have a way to earn extra money. Yes. So that would give them that motivation. Right. And so like going back to like the age, like what age do you start? This was something that I was debating too. Like what age do you start? And I guess for us it was when we started public school. Um, and it worked well for us. But I was thinking too like when she was like four or something like that to, to start doing that. But it just didn't make sense for us at the time. I was actually really sense. interested in doing this with Marcus yeah. because I've um, seen like uh, in the past, like Facebook posts where like the little son or the little daughter has enough allowance and they mm -hmm. go on like a date with mommy or daddy mm -hmm. and I just send that or their, their, you know, their parents or whoever. I just thought that was so cute. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I think yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm saying like, yeah, I'm open to like learning more and exploring yeah. more ways that this would work. Yeah. I think one of the challenges is when you start, you know, and you're giving somebody an allowance, you have to think about like, what is it they're likely to want to buy yeah. that and and how much would that cost mm -hmm. so i was lucky when they were young they wanted um you know like pokemon cards and they would come and <laughs> they would come and we fill their bowl packs and they were like three dollars at the time i have no idea what they are now um and so that meant that you know i could think about okay well they're, they're young enough that how long can they wait? I mean, you know, because I didn't want it just to go to candy or whatever that was cheaper. So, yeah. you know, you, you kind of, that was one way that I kind of made a decision about how much was. I thought, well, what's a reasonable amount of time to save up to be to able get, to buy yeah. an item? So you kind of have to know, like, what's available, what are they mm -hmm. interested what do they in want? buying. What do they like? Yeah, because, uh, and it's okay when they're really little if it's just something like a small dollar item or whatever but then mm -hmm. at some point it gets to be a little frustrating mm -hmm. if you can't save up in a short amount you know in a relatively short amount of time right so we have two questions there's the first okay. one is about um the 4-h project my financial future project mm -hmm. are there certain criteria for the project i'm gonna divert you to i don't know and we yeah. will hopefully get someone to answer that question for you because um i know there is a there is a financial mm -hmm. um piece of the 4-h pro there is a 4-h project about personal finance but I don't really know what much is it about again? it. Because I my have, financial future project for 4-H. Are there criteria for the? Well, I'm pretty sure there'll be criteria for yeah. the project. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I can probably say yes. <laughs> I don't know what that criteria is. I know several of the 4-H books, but that one is maybe a newer one that I'm not aware of. So, mm -hmm. what I would suggest is um, checking with your local extension office. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll try to actually find out about that and post on about it later on, on this page so that you can get that information. Sorry, um, I don't know about that one. Steve Wald asks, kids are curious about and ask about everything. Some, maybe many financial topics are personal or are discussed openly mm -hmm. like salaries. Any thoughts on how much info to share with kids and why some topics are taboo? Great question. Oh. I love it. I think one of the concerns I had was how do I communicate sensitive information like on oh, my mm -hmm. family salary mm -hmm. to my kids mm -hmm. at an age where they wouldn't share it with, with everybody at yes. school 
Um, and so my mommy makes this. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So I'm probably I am one of those you know people that didn't really give them hard numbers mm-hmm. when they were younger. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was comfortable kind of saying it relatively, like, mm-hmm. you know, we make more than a lot of your friends, parents, yeah. but we probably don't make the most right. of all your friends or, you know, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. So they had a sense of it. I think they started asking me about that when they would go to other people's ha- houses and they would come home and say, they have a really small house or they have a really big house or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so we could talk about it relatively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because I think it's a reasonable concern. Now, by the time they, you, they get to the age, and this will vary for different children, you know, where you feel like they have some idea of discretion, <laughs> mm-hmm. then you can, yeah. then you might be able to share more. Mm-hmm. And it's also your own comfort level with yes. it. Um, some people are very com- are comfortable with that. And some it depends aren't. on your kid too, because I feel like you know, if your kid's more mature than others, then you know, like they know that discretion, right? They mm-hmm. know what that. Yeah. Don't go blabbing about how much mommy makes about you know. And then I think there's sometimes a question. It doesn't when they're younger, like before high school, I would guess. I'm not sure that round numbers really mean much to them. Yeah, because they just want to know what you can buy. What can you and get? There, and there's no, yeah, pers- there's no perspective unless you yeah. also talk about. I think it'd be more useful maybe to talk about. This is my money that I bring home every month. These are the things that I have to pay for it, mm-hmm. and here are the relative amounts that go out of it. Mm-hmm. And then this is what we have left for mm-hmm. the things that we want to just do that are discretionary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, that would be a more useful conversation mm-hmm. than just this is the round number of what I make. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. Did that I, answer Steve's question? I maybe need yeah. to look at it Well, I think again. even just talking about that money is taboo in general, mm-hmm. um, I think that's an important topic to talk mm-hmm. about as well mm-hmm. because you know maybe some families aren't as open so like mm-hmm. when you go over to a friend's house and they're they talk about money you know like so or they freely. or they don't yeah, yeah. so freely like yeah. like like i feel like well, if i went to you, that, yeah, like, you? <laughs> we went to your house they'd be like marcus would be like oh, oh we're talking about pros yeah. and cons what like <laughs> piggy banks i don't you know like but you know in my house when i was little that was never discussed right. so i think mm-hmm. that um you know just maybe having that discussion about money is a taboo topic Absolutely. whether you say the word taboo or you you know get or you down just to say their... some things we keep you know private mm-hmm. within our own family mm-hmm. and I, as parents you do want to protect your kids if you're going through hard times you don't want them to know like the depth of everything that's going on right. and so making sure that um, you know what you're comfortable with just like Kathy was saying where yes you can say well we don't have this money saved to buy this right now um, Give them like a timeline sometimes too, or if if you can provide that to try mm-hmm. to give them a time to say, well we can't do it right now, so let's talk more about it again next month or something like that, where it's not just no and it's just end of conversation. And if you need another motivation to talk to your children about money while they're growing up, um, remember this stuff goes both ways later on. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> I work with a lot of college students, and a lot of college students don't want to worry their parents or talk to their parents about the financial challenges they're mm-hmm. having. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think that actually gets them deeper into trouble um, because they're trying to protect their parents. And, or, and, and there has been no real good history of communication. And so, and, and then it gets even harder like when you're an older, you know, you're an adult and you're helping your older aging parents. Mm-hmm. If there's not been a, a you know, yeah. a communication relationship about, that. about talking about yeah. money and then there needs to be mm-hmm. a conversation about money, all these things are kind of tricky. Mm-hmm. So there's just a lot of value in mm-hmm. treating, talking about money the same way as talking about, you know, what are we going to eat for dinner or, you know, who's going where this week mm-hmm. and those kinds of things. So mm-hmm. really there's some real value in that. Yeah. Um, Jesse says, how can I get my young adult son to save money? He spends every dollar he makes and he doesn't even have any real responsibilities yet. I guide him and straight out tell him, but he does just doesn't seem to care about how to manage finances. He has a little savings because I basically force him to give me my money to save for him. I don't want the same issue with my three-year-old in the future. Any suggestions? Um, well, one, you might be looking at a money personality. Yeah. So there's oh, some yeah, things about, about <laughs> how people use money mm-hmm. that are really sort of ingrained in who they are. Um, I don't think there's really an, it's bad to say, for me, this was my value judgment, okay, but the, to say like, while they're growing up, 
and they are earning money, you can kind of force savings mm-hmm. in the saying, you know, out of every dollar you earn, X percentage needs to go into savings for whatever, mm-hmm. short-term or long-term savings. I think that's why they need to practice it. Yeah. But mm-hmm. ultimately, when they're young adults, they're going to manage money the way they want to manage mm-hmm. money. And as you said, he has no responsibilities. Why would you save money? Yeah, that's you know, a good what's point. the motivation mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. Why would I bother to save it if there's no reason I need yeah. to? So, I don't know whether you, you know by young adult how old you mean, but you know, if we don't, if there's no reason to save it, then people aren't going to save. Yeah, <clears throat> I think for a lot comes, of personalities. Uh, so I think this actually comes back to like talking about children's savings account, like almost like on the other end of the spectrum, like kids if they know they're being saved for, like do academically better, all of that. But if they have no reason to save, then, you know, if they, they don't know why, then they won't do it. So just kind of throwing it back at the end. Yeah. I mean, I would say that I see, you know, lots of different behaviors in young adults. And I think some people learn by experience. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. there's, and, and mm-hmm. that's what's going to, the way it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And some people are just savers from the beginning. And they're saving at three and they continue to save. So I really do think money personality just comes into play. Yeah. And so. even going back to part of the question too, she was wondering like how to kind of break that pattern so that her three-year-old um, doesn't continue with that. And it goes back to some of what we were talking about too, um, if you were on earlier, um, with different strategies that you can use to have conversations Please totally yeah. around money and... Um, using like whether it's storytelling or hands-on activities or getting like a piggy bank, opening a savings account, all these different things um, to start with like your three-year-old as they're getting a little bit older into like preschool age to have like little conversations around that. And I think, okay, so 21, you know, be patient, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Be patient. Things come. (laughs) Um, You know, it it also, one of the things I oftentimes talk about with young adults is we're not only saving for emergencies, Mm -hmm. we're also saving for unexpected um, occasions and events. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when a great group comes into town and you want to go to the Mm -hmm. concert, you have money to Mm -hmm. to put towards it. Um, If there's going to be a road trip to Chicago, Mm -hmm. you can go with your friends Mm -hmm. because you have savings. That's a good point. Um, Mm -hmm. And so maybe that twisted around in that way. Mm -hmm. Like there's some advantages to having savings because you can do these unexpected fun things. Yeah. Now, if you're always paying for those unexpected fun things when they come up and they don't have money, mm-hmm. then again, yeah, there's no motivation story. to yeah, save. Yeah. Um, it's really hard as a parent when there are disasters and emergencies not to bail mm-hmm. them out. So I get that part. Um, it's a little easier for me personally to say no when it's like, well, that sounds like fun. And I'm sorry you don't have that money saved for. <laughs> <laughs> Tough love from Kathy Sleuther. <laughs> I use that example. I I use that example for like the unexpected. I was um, working with some youth, and I wanted to come up with something fun. I'm like, okay, who likes Beyonce? We are going to create a goal to save for like a Beyonce concert or um, something around that. So to start with saying, what goals do you have? Um, What are you wanting to do? Do you want the new PlayStation? How do you save for that? So even if it's not. Put in money away just to put money away, but put in money away for a specific goal. Well, even if like at, at 21 years old, you could start thinking about like, okay, well, one, one day you might want to buy a house or one day you might want to get married mm-hmm. or one day you might want to buy your own car. You know, maybe you, you have those conversations as well just to kind of maybe gear him in the right direction to say, hey, we really want you to start thinking about mm-hmm. these kind of savings opportunities, right? Um, and but, I hope you're 21 year old. Listens better than my twenty nine year old. But I would I would say, you know, and also going back to that role modeling, mm-hmm. you know, I, I remember one time my sons came to me and said, you know, we were talking about college at school and do you have any savings for that? <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's we need to have that conversation now, obviously. You know, they didn't even realize that like, yes, my husband and I have been saving for their college. I mean, that was part of our plan. Um, it's funny that they asked you that. Yeah, they really sort of panicked, I think. It was in high school, like, whoops, we missed on this. Well, and just to also just jump off of that point, like there are programs out there like 529 education mm-hmm. plans that you can start putting money in to mm-hmm. start saving for mm-hmm. college or um, – Post-secondary, post-secondary education, education. my brain was like, what is that word? Yeah. You know, whether it's, um, you know, mm-hmm. the education piece where they go to college or whether they, um, you know, are looking at things mm-hmm. like 
pipe fitting or electricians or mm-hmm. whatever it is. So um, I think those are out there and available. I did blog about it once. So it's in our, our Plan While well Retire blog about talking about 529 plans. Yeah. And when you go to our blog, you can, on the right-hand side, there's a topic that's like, Kids, kids and money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it says kids. kids. Or maybe kids and money. I'm not yeah. really sure. But. So we, it looks like we've just got a few more minutes. So this is the last call for questions. Last call for um, questions. Before we wrap up. And I really have enjoyed this conversation. I have too. And I hope that mm-hmm. other people have had an opportunity mm-hmm. to listen and think about it. Mm-hmm. All these things we're saying is really has to fit into the context of your family and Absolutely. your values and how much money you have that's discretionary Mm -hmm. Um, there are times when we can't give our kids allowances Mm -hmm. Um, there's times when we can't save for our kids um, education we have to look at other options but you know modeling what you think is important and sharing your values and having those conversations I think that's really the key part absolutely so ditto to all of that triple (laughs) Is that what? Ditto too? Yeah, so even like as we wrap up, like why I always go back to this. We always go back to this. Why does it matter? Why are we covering this topic? Why does it matter to cover a topic on like money smart kids? And a big part is having those conversations now, giving them opportunities to practice will result in like healthy financial decisions as they get older. You know, being less delinquent on like loans and credit cards and all the big decisions that they're going to have to make. Right? They're going to have to make homes, those later. Looking, comparing, contrasting yeah. <clears throat> whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, this car versus this car mm-hmm. or this loan versus this loan. Yes. I think that's a good exactly. point. Exactly. And having had that chance to practice, mm-hmm. when they're young adults, they'll be less stressed by it. Mm-hmm. And that will mean less anxiety. Mm-hmm. So we've there's some research, very interesting research coming out about that in terms of um, what is driving anxiety in young adults. Yeah. And part of it mm-hmm. is being uncomfortable with money. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so... I think that's another, you know, motivator yeah. to like do it. And one of the things I did is during the school year, I just felt like sometimes life was so crazy. I didn't have a chance to focus on life skills the way I always <laughs> wanted to. And so sometimes during the summer, I would actually sit down and think like, okay, so what kind of, you know, where do I think my kids are at this point? What skills do I want them to, you know, pick yeah. up this summer? And it might be a chance to think of ways to practice mm-hmm. some of these financial skills, whether it's helping you shop at the grocery store mm-hmm. and comparison shop or helping plan a family vacation and setting up a family budget for that ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, picking up some extra chores so they can make some money so they have extra money. Right. Um, what what are the things that your kids could be doing this summer that you might have a little extra time and energy for? Um, so there's a question about life insurance. How much is reasonable amount of life insurance should I have to raise my newborn through through to college? Is there a range? Um, so I used to sell life insurance, oh. and um, I guess I will sort of tackle this. <clears throat> but I would I would tell you that. Um, you know, it depends on what you're looking for for the life insurance. Are you really looking for that life insurance in the event of an untimely death? Or are we looking at more like a cash value and like making that grow? So when they um, do go to college, like you can give them that policy and then give them those funds. Because I feel like if you're just wanting to give them funds later on, then, you know, a savings account or a, a different a 529. saving, a 529 would be a better way to go about that. Um, but if you're looking to insure their the possibility of their untimely death and that's a completely mm-hmm. different um almost a whole completely different topic yeah. that we could cover in like mm-hmm. another whole hour but. <laughs> yeah i think thinking about mm-hmm. just what you said what you know what would you need how much money would you need in an untimely death so mm-hmm. um i know that when i was looking at it for myself and things that we would think about you know replacing the salary that mm-hmm. was coming in and mm-hmm. did we need to replace all of it or part of it right. and for how long like mm-hmm. until the you know the you know, if the kids were 15, it was different than if the kids were five. Yeah. Um, and then if you're kind of also looking through college education, then you might want to have to kind of calculate out what you think that piece you would want to add to it. Right. Um, yeah. So that's sort of just a rough way to kind of start thinking about mm-hmm. what estimating what what dollar amount do you want somebody to have? And I guess the other question is like, with. why do you why would you want a policy? What mm-hmm. is the policy actually for? What's the goal of it? Is my other mm-hmm. my other piece that I would ask? Uh, so I don't think this is the right arena to really kind of throw out numbers on this one. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But I think it's one of those things that you kind of have to think about. What's your goal for it? Mm-hmm. How much? What's the time period you want it to cover for? Um, what other income streams are there for the family yeah. that might kick in or not kick in? Well, 
It is right at one o'clock, <laughs> and we just want to thank you all for coming today and Yay. talking about um, kids and money with us. We really enjoyed kind of talking to you about some of the resources like the mm-hmm. CFPB has for us with the money as you grow, talking about millennials and the things that they experienced looking back on their um, childhood, but we hope you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, Kathy and Kamaya and I will try to answer those later um, once we get off the broadcast, but we've enjoyed today and we hope you have too. Thank Thank you. you so much.